logic for the board should be fairly simple. Uh, you, you can drive the address lines with current from logic. Uh, the microcontroller just doesn't have enough pins, so you need some port expansion. And my first idea was to use uh, decade counters. You get 10 outputs for a single chip, and the chips are cheaper than uh, shift registers, or latching shift registers anyway. The reason I didn't, we say this is the uh, the first bit, which will be bit 0 for the, the first address. We'll pass through here, read a 1 because we pass another 1, another 1 because we pass through the core, and then we bypass this one, so we end up with a 0. So we get a value for the first address of 1110 coming out of the secondaries. Uh, and we'd go to the second address, and we get a 1 there on the other side. Pass through, get a 0. Uh, Sorry, bypass, and then two pass throughs we get a one one, so we end up with one o oh, one one. All good. What I think would actually happen is uh, we turned on this line, read a one here. As we turn this line on, we'd be turning this one off at uh, very close to the same time. So we'd have a negative pulse from uh, this line at the same time as a positive pulse on this line, and what I think would actually happen is they know each other out and we get nothing out of the secondary end up with a bit zero for this one be a negative pulse here at the same time there's nothing happening here since the input circuitry wouldn't read negative pulses we'd get a zero this bit here uh, bit two the third bit same situation as the first another zero uh, this one here we get the positive pulse so the actual circuit I've put together intended for the task is a bit more like this where it's incomplete. I haven't drawn every chip in. I've only drawn one 8-bit channel of the ferrites uh, and it's only more a functional diagram. Uh, all uh, 8 chips total on the board, 4 chips per channel, 4 shift registers per 8 ferrites uh, which allows for 32 uh, wires addressing lines, 32 bytes per channel. Um, Mistakenly, I've drawn the capacitors on the outputs where the, the capacitors are really on your, uh, your outputs from your shift registers, and I've drawn them on the outputs from secondaries uh, by mistake. These should all just be straight lines. Um, so all your yeah, reset, clock, data, latch, all of them are tied together except data uh, will be uh, daisy chain. So data would really be input to this chip, out to this chip. Uh, input to the next chip and then out to the next chip, blah blah blah. Um, so you actually have to write all 64 bits to just address one of these address lines. Uh, so you pump in your 64 bits and then latch and then it'll activate one of these address lines then reset your shift, shift registers and then latch again and that'll clear everything. Send in the new 64 bits for the next addressing line, latch again and then the next line uh, will be active. And uh, all the time reading an 8-bit port input uh, on RB in this example, port B. Oh, it's got to be on. That's the LED, yeah, okay. When Jerry Ellsworth uh, demonstrated a uh, ferrite core magnetic coupling in the uh, core logic forgotten technology video, I think she was actually sliding a, a bar ferrite in and out of a coil, which I couldn't do uh, because it's a, a, a toroid donut core. Couldn't pull it out of the coil, so that's why I smashed it out of the last video. The address wires did stay intact, uh, all still there, and this green LED isn't going to flash again unless I change software or uh, redo the coil <laughs> um, so yeah there is no feedback there and that was uh, I suppose to demonstrate the authenticity of the circuit and also this board is finished with did I say finished with? I believe I did say finished with hey it's an LED oh what? yeah 
Man, I make good stuff. If that didn't pass q and I don't know what did. That crystal. Ugh. Gotta be kidding me. Can't even make something that breaks anymore. That chip is just driven into that socket like you would never get it out. And that's still clocking. That, <laughs> that crystal is still clocking. Well. I think I just got the crystal there. So yeah, I'll turn it off now. Don't want to waste power. So the logic board's almost finished now. I've wired up the uh, these little brass pins. Uh, all the inputs to the microcontroller from the uh, transformer output secondaries. Uh, so yeah, we've got some little brass pins. You should see them along there. So there's 16 in total. Didn't all fit exactly where I wanted them to. And the one input from the shift registers that's uh, on the inside uh, orientation of wide out to the outside. So you've got uh, bits uh, 0 to 7 all along the outside edge. It's the blue wires there. Um, so easily connect to the uh, the memory board. So for 64 bytes of memory uh, two of those bytes are zero values so those wires can be omitted so there's actually 64, uh, 62 wires out of the uh, 64 bytes of memory um, so what's really left uh, to do is on the outside of these uh, shift registers on the outputs I have to uh, trim, tin and solder 62 uh, 100 NF capacitors so I don't really know why I do this Isn't it beautiful? That's all surface mount, so it's a job with tweezers. Uh, I'm proud, even though I wouldn't use that kind of board again, where it's just pure point to point wiring. I've gone and brought the rest of the chips I needed to populate the board. I only needed uh, four to finish the board, and I brought six Texas instruments. Texas Instruments <laughs> and what's this? I don't think I can handle seven of one chip in a board and then uh, one of another I think air yeah, or uh, does that make me too fussy? I'm not, not sure but I think I'm gonna have to go get another chip So the only change I've made to the iPhone program since posting it on YouTube is uh, when it finally starts. I've slowed it down because I've got to make a video out of this. Uh, my developer license has expired, and so I've got to actually run it on a, a, from a projector from a DVD player. Um, since the core board, uh, the phases are aligned, the, the dot size of the transformers, so that a wire should be fed in. At, from opposite directions depending on the channel and then terminated to earth and, and at opposite ends so that the uh, 32 wires uh, coming out of one side will connect to the chips easily on that side and same with the other side uh, I'll grab the camera the program writes a debug line of uh, bytes I had trouble converting the, the video for an older DVD player so I've uh, copied it as a series of images to this trusty Sony PSP and it does the job and the, the purpose is just so I can sit somewhere comfortable and weave the memory just about anywhere uh, a little bit slow but it'll do the job 
and it's the same way the app was going to be anyway it was just going to be a back and forwards control through the, the bits so uh, I can still check uh, which byte it is so I think it'll serve the purpose nicely it isn't really necessary to, uh, to reverse the order of bits even uh, along here if you uh, decided that's the least significant bit and this side is going to be the most significant bit it'll be the opposite on this side um, the arrow is an indicator of which side the wire enters when I'm threading it I definitely don't want to mix it up uh, make them inconsistent that's something that have to be fixed in software and cheating a little bit uh, but for a whole uh, row I didn't really need to uh, reverse bits because you you could just fix that in hardware uh, without the need for any software just depending on the order that you connected the outputs to the port pins as long as the wiring for each channel is consistent uh, so I don't think I'll do any recording of the actual wire weaving I want to do it all in one session uh, to keep it uniform and make sure that I don't change the way I do it um, and I don't think it'll take too long anyway um, so unless there's uh, any sort of problems then I think the next thing uh, I'll come up with is a working model. So I'll see you then.